about 5 p.m. this date, she escaped from the sanitarium. Subject is described as white female American, 105 pounds, 5 feet 3 inches tall, 42 years, black hair, last seen wearing blue overcoat, no further description. Subject is reported to be a mental case and could become violent. Frequency clear, KMA 394. 561 reporting in service, starting mileage 7395-7395. Control 1 to 5, 6, 10, 4. Did you receive description of a escaped mental patient? Uh, 56104, we have it. Control 1 to 5, 6, 10, 4, 6, 0, 8 p.m., starting night watch. This is Don Reed, a police recorder. Right now, you're in the back seat of a detective unit, number 56. That was Sergeant Ron Perkins reporting in service on the night watch. Jotting down the description of that escaped mental patient. We'll probably be working on that later. But while you're with us tonight, remember, the people you hear are not actors. This is it. This is real. This is night watch. Night watch. The actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors, no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch. Presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. We switch you now to Detective Unit 5-6, somewhere in the field, and police recorder Don Reed. Drives blocked. We're swinging into the other here. Uniformed officers Good and Cameron holding middle aged woman, bareheaded, long blue coat. Confused expression on her face. To leave. I've been trying to leave, so I scanned the wall and went to the gas station and called my husband to come and get me. In the meantime, those guys are chasing me, trying to bring me back into the sanitarium, and you're not allowed out there or anything. Which, uh, which fellows are chasing me? I don't know. I've escaped them to here now when they call the cops. I, I'm afraid to even walk. They come, come here, you and they, uh, Oh, you can't imagine. You can't. Uh, 42 years old, you ought to be able to be sick yourself. You shouldn't have to stay, should you? Huh? Against your will? Who put you in there, your husband? Yeah, we, well, I, I had got out of my head a couple, a couple of weeks ago, and he put me there with Dr. Uh, whatever his name is. And... There I've been, and I've been getting all right, and I want to go now. They won't let you go. They won't let you go. And they've got several others in there the same way. They don't let them out. I said to the doctor this morning, I'd love to go home. I want to leave here. Oh, no, you can't. And he knocked me out like that. He gave me a shock treatment and knocked me out. And so tonight, uh, they let us out in the back a little bit. Talk about convicts. They let us out in the back a little bit, and quite a large nurse there was watering and I saw a wall, and I scanned the wall and ran down here, and they're chasing me. That that shouldn't be allowed, should it, when you're 42 years old? Huh? Well, what's your husband think of this? He doesn't know what it's all about. He know, he'll know now. Well, how long ago did you call your husband? Uh, about 10 minutes or so. Well, why don't you come with us then? We'll go down to the station, and we'll 
way down there. We'll contact no, you your husband. No, you won't come. Please let me make a phone call first. Uh, we'll, we'll call My husband's on his way. I hope it's still up My husband's coming down here. My husband okay. said he was coming here. So let me wait for my husband here. You want to wait with me? Then I'll go back with you. Mrs. There's a phone booth right there. Uh-huh. See? Right there. If you want to call your husband, go right ahead. All right, but I've got to get changed for court. Well, Evidently, okay. even though she's just talked to her husband, See, she uh, wants to talk to him again. She's uh, huddled in a small outside well, phone booth. Breeze flowing in from the ocean, scattering her hair all over her face. Twenty cents. I'll have to throw the quarter in. Well, I don't care about a refund. I never knew that a person wasn't allowed to choose their own life in this world. They're not my bosses. Why would I have to go with them? Will you tell me that? Why do I have to go with them? They're not my bosses. They're not my bosses. What is wrong with you? I won't have it. Please come and get me. What are you waiting for? What? Would you please come and take me home? Come on, and come home. Just a minute. Just a minute. Hey, they're coming after me. Your husband is coming yes. after you? Yes. Can we please call the cops back? Just a minute. Hello, camera car. Are they coming to get me? Please. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be in this wreck if they don't. I can't relax. You don't know what they are like. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. You want to get in the car now? Yeah, Pert, this uh, woman's pretty confused. Arch and uh, Paul are going to take her down to the station. You want to go with them? No. Yeah. I'm going to go out to the sanitarium and see what I can find out. I'll see you down at the station. Right. Okay. Thank you. See you later. All right. Anyway, listen, uh, could you go up the block and see if he happens to be there now? Well, he won't... I doubt if he could make it I don't know. He might have traveled fast because I was crying on the phone. I was crying on the phone. The woman is in the back seat with Officer Cameron. We'll ride up front. How uh, long have you been at the sanitarium? It'll be two weeks. Two weeks. Come Monday. Come Monday. You're not going to give me away, are you? Well, I mean, you're going to let my husband have me, aren't you? You ought to be your husband first. See what he wants. Because I don't want to go back to the sanitarium. Can't we choose our own doctors in this world? Huh? I'll tell you, we don't like to say anything about this until we talk to your husband. Yeah. He's the one that had you committed. Why should I be put in a sanitarium, I mean, and, and pay good money out when I don't need it? Please don't give me back to that sanitarium. They'll be so mean to me. You can't imagine how what they're like. You wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like it. I know you wouldn't. Would you bring my husband here to the police station? Oh, how wonderful. Oh, God. We're um, here at police headquarters. And the woman patient will be detained until her husband arrives. She's uh, being placed now in the detention room. I'm so scared. Can I stand? Well, you stay in there, though, for us. We have to close the door. We have to go on. And we have to. Well, well, can I stay here without being closed? Well, the desk officer. The desk officer by himself, man. We have to go. So you just go in there. Well, let me stand outside, then. No, no. We have to stand right here. Well, because regulations. I'm not a criminal. No, I didn't see you there. Please don't lock me in. I'll stay here gladly, but don't. Please don't don't lock me in. Well, he can slam it shut if they come after me. Well, no, we're not going to give him a chance to do that. But you just go in and sit down, now, and relax. 
How did you get in this sanitarium in the first place? Because I, I went out of my head. So they took me to this place here. What's it like up there? What's it like up there? There's a bedroom here, a bedroom there, and it's locked there, and it's locked there. And you're not allowed to go out. You're not allowed to use a phone. You're not allowed to call your husband. You're not allowed to use... You're not allowed to use any phones at all. So, once in a great while, they let us out in the backyard there, a little bit, see. So, this great big nurse was watering there, and I saw a wall, and I thought, God, I'm going to try. I just can't stand this any longer. So you went over the wall. So I went over the wall and ran and called my husband. I don't think he, he probably didn't realize how serious it was. Because now he's coming after well, me. how do they treat you up there? How do they treat you? They give you a little food and that's all. You're, you're like you're in jail. No different than here. You're not allowed out. Donna, will you step inside a minute? Yeah, sure. This is no different than I do. Did you uh, get down to the sanitarium, Perk? Yeah, I uh, went down and talked to the nurses. A couple of the people down there. Mm -hmm. She's uh, definitely a mental case, has a persecution complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feels that everybody's against her. Sergeant Perkins. Okay, be right over there. Her um, husband here? Yeah, uh, let's go over there. All right. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of a detective unit on its tour of duty. The people and sounds you are hearing are real, and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. And now we return you to police headquarters where an investigation is underway and to police recorder Don Reed. the office of Captain Lugo. Coming in the other door, the husband of the patient, nervously lighting a cigarette. Anxiety written all over his face. Captain Lugo, Sergeant Perkins are going to talk it over. Uh, earlier this evening, we had a call that... They were after from the sanitarium. Mm -hmm. And uh, the radio car officers were dispatched, and they contacted her and uh, noticed her being disturbed. Mm -hmm. Consequently, I assume that she has a mental illness of some kind or mm -hmm. some something that is disturbing her. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why you were called, because mm -hmm. something must be done to help your wife. Well, I, I called them. She called me. I see. Okay. First. So, uh, I mean, she just cried and hollered hysterical for me to please come and get her. So I knew it would take me a long time to get there, and I didn't know if she would stay there. So I, so when she hung up, then I, I called the sanitarium, see, and uh, they said, oh, yeah, we, uh, we're out looking for her now. We uh, had her out in the, uh, in the sun yard or flower yard or something with three or four other patients, and, uh, she uh, climbed over the wall, see. And uh, so uh, they said, we're out looking for her now. And I said, well, do you know where she's at? Where they're at? Uh, you don't know where she's at then? And she said, uh, no. So I told her that uh, she was at this gas station, see. She said, well, I'll tell them. Well, you, you can't tell them if they're out looking for her now, see. And, uh, well, that's, I guess, about it, isn't it? Yeah. Has she been at the sanitarium long? She, this was her second trip, and... She was there just eight days, and then she sold the doctor on the idea that she could come home. So he sent her home, and then uh, she cracked up again. Then we had to call the ambulance because at that time she went violent. See, have they been able to find out what causes it or what's back of it? They say not. I had to talk with the doctor Tuesday down at his office. Said that I had wanted to know something, or I'd tell her to move over down there. So, but he said all that they could do was give her these shock treatments, so 
I said, well, if that's the thing you do to your wife or someone dear to you, why, that's what I want done. So he told me then that uh, she should have 12 of these treatments see, and uh, be there a month and that I shouldn't see her, so I haven't seen her. Since. <coughs> I'm so confused now, I don't know what to do, and of course... <laughs> Well, sir, here, here's the situation. We will, uh, naturally, we've done what we can so far to assist you in your matter here, but if, uh, if you're going to take her back there, and you can take her back there, why, we'll be glad to release her to you. And uh, Or if you need any assistance uh, in any way, why, we'll be glad to give it to you. So if you think that you can take her back, if that's what you want to do, and that's what your doctor recommended, why... Well, that's, we, that's what he recommended, but like I say, you get... Uh, it's a little hard to think, well, maybe uh, straight yourself at a time like this, because, uh, I mean, I don't know. Well, we, I we, of course, don't have any no, I know. any specific I know. Uh, charge or reason to hold her on, uh, other than the fact that she is mm. more or less despondent and probably mentally ill. And uh, so whatever plans you have, we'll be glad to cooperate with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you talked to her? Did you see her or anything? I, no, I've talked to her just uh, very little. I, I talked to her just for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Perkins She's did talked to her, and, but uh, there's no doubt that there is a problem there. That of course, over the phone, uh, when she was uh, here, I mean, uh, she must have evidently grabbed the phone from the officer because uh, she said it's a chip joint. You don't know what they're doing to me and all that kind of thing. And I mean, uh, I mean, you know... Uh, I don't know. I'll take her home, but I mean, you don't know. See, sure. the sanitarium was was helpless uh, to come here and pick her up. Is that the idea? No, they um, they said that uh, she had apparently gone there voluntarily, mm -hmm. and that uh, they were not in a position to forcibly take her back on her, uh, without the mm -hmm. consent of, of her husband yeah. and uh, the person whoever was in charge. You know, the doctor and the, and the husband. Uh -huh. So they will but apparently will take her back. Uh, as long as they know you're here, I would suggest well, that you call the sanitarium. I, uh, I talked to them, you know, and I said uh, and uh, uh, said that uh, she thought it was better if one of their attendants go with the police officers and get her and bring her back rather than me, see, and I agreed heartily with that. Let me put it this way, uh, just uh, my observation, uh, if she had been picked up by herself under the circumstance that it happened and we had no relatives to contact like it happens once in a while, mm -hmm. Uh, I wouldn't recommend her being released. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, we would recommend that she be taken down to the general hospital. It may be that uh, after this episode, uh, your doctor may, may uh, have other findings for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you relieve you of your might relieve your mind mm -hmm. and uh, know that you are doing what you, uh, you no. believe is right. Man, I don't know. I I've done so much thinking, but I thought I had it all thought out. So did I, Monday, and then when I called the doctor and had a half-hour session with him, I mean, he tried to answer me on the phone. I said, I'm going to pay for a half-hour deal with him. And uh, he had, he convinced me. If she'd only be a good kid and go through with this. But, of course, I mean, if she had the reason to figure that out, I guess she wouldn't be in her first place. <laughs> I'm going to go by uh, these guys that have spent years at it. She should go back. I talked to the, uh, the attendant out there. They're going to send a male nurse and a female nurse down. Yeah. And we'll release them to, to them. Good. So they're on their way down now. Uh, uh, <coughs> let's get out of here. I don't want to see her. Why don't you watch the back way? And then you won't have to go there. From she, where she, she is. She can't see you right from where you walked in there. Oh, can she? Yeah, uh, she's in the oh. back there, so she, there's a possibility that she might hear your voice. Or can she see our car across the street? No, no, not, no she's inside. She can just see her as you go out there. So you wanted to go right up the back door. If you don't mind using the back door oh, here, no, no. it might keep her from becoming more yeah. emotionally upset. Well, I guess we're doing the right thing, huh? After all, you, uh, you've gone to your doctor, and, uh, yeah. and uh, he is a professional man. He, he's the one that should guide you in yeah. matters like this. Yeah, and you, yeah. But uh, when she said it was a gym joint on the phone, you know, I, I get the idea of dungeons and chains. And <laughs> well, it's a very reputable place. She don't even have to know we were here, does she? I guess. We won't tell her anything. Her husband is slowly leaving the back door. Shoulders slumped over. 
It's carrying a pretty heavy burden. Captain, uh, the attendants from the sanitarium are out in front. Uh, we might as well turn her over to them. Let's move out to the detention room. Sanitarium, mm -hmm. and uh, consequently, we told him that we would assist you in, in getting her back, her back if it was right. necessary. So we have a couple of men coming in to help oh. you if you like. But yes. uh, the doctor recommended that he not see her because it probably would excite That's her all the more. I, I wanted to bring a hypo with him and give it to her. I would quieten her down. Well, we'll assist you when you start taking her. Away. We'll be glad to assist all you. All right. To attempt to get the patient out of the detention room. Officers opening the door. Woman is hiding in the corner. You know, uh, we hadn't hurt you, have we? Of course we hadn't. Well, why don't you... They're not going to hurt you. We'll tell her not they're to hurt you. No, you don't know those girls there. I know you people there. You're, you're locked in there. You're not allowed to go out. I asked if I could go to the dentist tomorrow. And they said no. What did I tell you? I said, tomorrow we'll contact the dentist. Oh, how are you guys? See how they are? Well, you're, you're going to... And, and I'm 42 years old. Yes. Can I be my own boss? Well, look. Here's the situation. I'm 42. You go, you go with them. They'll lock me in there again. Yeah. I know that. Well, you go, you go with them. You, you know go, it, you too. Yeah. Well, will you, will you keep the subject has been coaxed out of the detention room. Nurse assisting her outside to a waiting ambulance. Well, this has to be done. How to get her in as quietly as possible is the problem. One of the officers has a restraining strap under his arm. Hope it won't be necessary to use it. I bet you. Oh, you just go right ahead. And Aren't you it. officers to help? Sure, we are. Well, that's will that's, you that's help what we're now? doing. That's what we're doing. Come on, will you help me? I don't want to go with them. Sure, come on. I don't want to go with them. I don't trust them. You know darn well, once you get me in there, I'm stuck, ain't I? No, 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 no. Well, then why, why are you after me, then? They want you to go back. You can't stay here all night. Oh, and you watch tomorrow. I'll be in that sanitarium again. That's up to your husband. You're not up there. Well, I'm 42. Ain't I old enough? All right. You talk to your husband about it. Come on. I'll sit in the front. All right. Him again. That's up to your husband. You're not up there. Well, I'm 42. Ain't I old enough? All right. You talk to your husband about it. Come on. Get up front. I'll sit in the front. All right. Officers are helping her into the front seat. Male attendant sliding in beside her. I'm so scared. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I'm so I don't want to go back there. I don't want no, that thing, There's nothing thing, to be doctor. scared about. I'm sure I have to have that thing, No, your husband's no. got another doctor. We'll straighten that out. We'll take care. We haven't hurt you yet, have we? No, but, uh, but now you're... Here. But now you no, won't... No. I can't get near a phone. Oh, will you come with us, please? Well, finally succeeded in getting the young lady into the ambulance. The other in here calling in the distance. Sure? You, you go back and you help me over the stairs. nurse on one side and the female nurse on the other to secure her. You better come over. Wait till I get out. I'll be awful. Uh, 
there she goes. Returning now to the sanitarium. Well, Perk, some people are lucky. Some people... Yeah, are... let's get the work done. What you have just heard is real. Recorded as it happened on The Night Watch. For the disposition of this case, we return you to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's case varies from the usual conception of police work by merely lending assistance in a purely personal matter. However, the facts are important. We have a man who had to make a decision, a very difficult decision. After 20 years of a successful marriage, this verdict was not easy to reach. Sentiment and his love for his wife would have led many people in his position to do nothing and hope. In reality, this would have been the cruelest step of all. Regardless of how heartbreaking a problem he faced, the commitment was made. Contrary to his wife's views, the sanitarium he selected is one of the most competent in the area. A recent check shows his wife is responding to treatment and soon should be able to return home and take her normal place in society. We have presented this case tonight because other people throughout the country are facing similar situations. If we can make just a few realize that the proper decision in time may spare the victim years of agony, then we have a purpose in presenting the actual happenings on the night watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have just heard on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice... Every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of your police department of Culver City, California, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hedlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by police recorder Don Reed.